What's up everyone? This is FP Stakes bringing you my regional cup tournament recap video here. Uh, I was able to make elite trainer, which is really exciting. However, my performance in regionals was uh, nowhere near as good as I would have liked. I went three and two. Um, we were one person away from having six rounds. The The challenge of this is that this tournament took place on Abra Community Day. We were able to move the time back a little bit so it would start at 4 p.m., but there were still some people that would rather grind triple Stardust than do regionals. I mean, I can understand Stardust is super important, but that was a huge bummer to all of us doing regionals that we were one person short from being able to get six rounds very unfortunate so i went three and two this obviously was a weighted cup um so i i'm not going to get an invite for continentals i don't think unless there's like a overall ranking invite system but um the team i rolled with was hypno azumarill tropius toxicroak melmetal and alolan muck uh, there's some decent gameplay in here. I do make some mistakes. The thing with this Voyager Cup is um, it's essentially open Great League format, you know, and what actually happens when a meta is more wide open, you actually run into more hard counters. Um, because everyone's going to be picking like the best Pokemon um, within their class. So Bastidon, for example, complete wall to any flyer. Um, you know, Tropius, complete wall to Meganium, like all these like little uh, micro interactions where it's just complete hard counters make this a very lead dependent cup. And there are definitely moments here where sometimes you just have to sacrifice your lead Pokemon in order to be able to survive. But let's get into this tournament recap. This first round is up against Lieutenant Keefe here. Looks like I'm rolling with Alolan Muck, Toxicroak, and Melmetal. I did switch out my Probopass for a Melmetal because Melmetal is a little bit more flexible than Probopass and Bastidon. So this is somewhat of a neutral matchup here. We both are hitting each other for um, neutral damage. However, I'm pretty sure Skarmory wins this just because of its bulk. I only needed one more Dark Pulse to come through to take out that Skarmory, but my Melmetal absorbs the Sky Attack, which is amazing for me. Out comes the Alolan Marowak. Here's an example right here where um, Melmetal is great because I'm able to get to these Rock Slides very quickly. He's most likely going to commit to the Farm Down. I definitely would have committed to the Farm Down right there. I actually do uh, commit a shield here because I know I can get to another rock slide. This is either going to draw that last shield or do a lot of damage. I get both shields from that secondary matchup really good for me. Alolan Muck is a pretty solid answer to this. Bone Club really doesn't do that much damage even though it's super effective. The thing is... That Skarmory is going to give me a lot of problems. It is at half health. You see me over farming on the Alolan Marowak a little bit there. If that Skarmory comes back out, I need to be able to drop, uh, drop a Dark Pulse on it. I'm barely able to do it. I think Alolan Muck would have won that CMP tie if it was a CMP tie. But then I bring in my Toxicroak. Oh my gosh, I tried to farm this thing down, but it actually was able to get off a Sky Attack, which I did not want that to happen at all. Thank goodness it's a Meganium in the back. I'm barely going to get to this Sludge Bomb, and this should be enough to take out the Meganium. Crazy close first match there. Jeez. All right. Looks like I'm running the same line here. Alolan Muck. Oh, man. The second match is so tricky to try to decide what, what you're going to do. Are you going to bring the same lineup? Are you uh, going to predict like that they're going to change their lineup and then try to counter that? It's like every time I should have run the exact same lineup, I, I tend to like not to. Like I just get unlucky with selection there. And it seems like every time that I should have like swapped my lead, it doesn't work out either. Because if I would have simply switched to a Toxicroak lead there, would have been a different story. And Toxicroak actually has decent matchups against Polyrath, Defense Deoxys, Bastidon. Um, Meganium is okay. You do have to land the Sludge Bomb, um, but Meganium can just go straight Frenzy Plant and still beat you because of how glassy you are. Out comes the Alolan Marowak. This is a very heavily charged Melmetal here. Should be able to get off uh, another Rock Slide, but I'm actually going to switch into my Alolan Muck. 
This Bastiodon is a beast. I'm going to have to land three Dark Pulses to take this thing out. He went for Flamethrower, which I found pretty interesting. Stone Edge is the way to go because you get Stab on it, and I'm pretty sure they're both the same energy cost, so... I'm either going to pressure this last shield, or he's going to have to let this Bastiodon go. This Bastiodon is still so bulky! I'm absolutely going to have to shield this, and then farm down. He goes for Flamethrower again. Stone Edge is definitely the way to go. I'm able to Snarl it down. Out comes that Marowak. I don't think I have quite enough for a, uh, a second Dark Pulse. Oh my gosh, barely able to get it. Does this one-shot the Marowak? No, it doesn't. I bring in my Melmetal. I'm not even able to get to a charge move here, but I absorb the energy. <coughs> but the fire spin damage from the Alolan Ma Marowak is just too much. So close. I'm going for an Azumarill lead. I have yet to see a Meganium in the lead, so let's try this out. Amazing matchup for me. Definitely a solid matchup. He stays in the farm of a little bit extra, and unfortunately, I don't have a better response to this Skarmory. I did not bring in the Melmetal in this line, but I get a shield there. Okay, that's fine. I have a Lolan Muck for that Alolan Marowak, so I, I know that I have that in the back. Totally fine. I'm just going straight Hydro Pump here because I started with such a significant energy advantage. But he double shields, dude. He freaking double shields. And this is actually pretty rough for me now. Because I am getting very close to being in Sky Attack range. And this Skarmory is definitely not in Ice Beam range yet. <clears throat> I really have to get to this Hydro Pump. I'm able to get there. Oh my goodness. Skarmory goes down. What is going to come out to farm me here? I'm still in control of this matchup. Out comes a Lowland Marowak? What could possibly be in the back that is scared of this Azumarill? It's got to be Bastiodon. We will see. Oh man, this is most likely going to be a Bone Club right here. It does hit for super effective damage, but again, you can see Bone Club is a pretty terrible move. And it's Bastiodon in the back. It's Bastiodon in the back. So it was crucial that I maintained a good alignment with this line. Um, because Mud Bomb's going to be coming through here, and it's not going to be able to take out Lolan Marowak. But this ensured that my Toxicroak was going to be able to get on the Bastiodon in the back. I made a huge call there. Was able to take that first round. Good games there, Lieutenant Keith. Round two is up against Trainee Joey, 182. Bad lead for me. Very bad. This Zwylus gave me um, so many problems here. Now, I switch into my Toxic Croak and catch a Body Slam, which actually isn't ideal. I did want to give my Alolan Mux some energy. Um, he brings out his own Toxic Croak, which I thought was extremely interesting. There's no way that he's running Hypno in this line because um, otherwise that would totally punish the Toxic Croak. Now, I'm banking on the fact that I can get to a second Mud Bomb here. So I do commit a shield right there. I am barely able to get to this second Mud Bomb. And this draws out his last shield. So we're looking all right, but we still don't have control of this match. And I don't have a great response to this. I bring out Azumarill. I'm hoping that this is a Mud Bomb. It is a Mud Bomb. But the thing is, I'm pretty sure this Toxicroak is going to be able to get to a Sludge Bomb here. But I'm fully committing to the fast move farm down right now. Ah, oh, it's a Mud Bomb. Absolutely brutal. I'm able to bubble down the Toxicroak. I have a half health Azumarill now. It's a Registeel in the back. But because of my health, I'm almost in Flash Cannon range. I need to land a second Hydro Pump. I switch into my Alolan Muck right here to put on some Dark Pulse Pressure. And then um, he switches into his Zwylus. I really need to get to a Sludge Wave, but I'm not able to. I know that his Registeel is super low in health. I can't get too greedy here. Oh, man. I'm going to eat a Body Slam now. But honestly, uh, I, I was in flash cannon range anyways, so 
I undercharge the Ice Beam. I'm able to get one more bubble. Really good for me. But Azumarill loses the CMP tie to Registeel. Dang it, man. If I would have been able to get that Ice Beam through, might have been able to take it out. That Registeel was very low. But okay, we're going to try this again. Alolan Muck lead. Can we see a better lead scenario? Nope. Even worse. Even worse. So I had two very bad lead matchups in these games. So I switch into my Azumarill. He switches into Registeel, which is, again, pretty interesting because it's not technically a counter to Azumarill, especially if I have an energy advantage. The Hydro Pump goes through, which is a really big play for me. But my only response to that Toxicroak now is my own Toxicroak in the back. So if I go into a Shield Deficit, I'm absolutely screwed. Hmm, I definitely could have considered shielding that up right there. And then going for the Ice Beam here instead of the Hydro Pump. I was really fretting, really worried here. Because now this Toxic Croak is going to come out and farm me down again. And this is... This is horrible. Actually, Zwilus comes out to farm me down. But the thing is, my only response to his Toxicroak is my Toxicroak. So I should bring out my Alolan Muck. Debatable play right here. Because of all the stored energy, I should have maybe just brought in my Toxicroak right off the bat. Oh man, and then I'm too slow to switch out. So I'm just, I'm going to have to let my Toxicroak, oh, and I'm not able to get my Alolan Muck out of there. In my head, I was thinking, okay, my Toxic Croak with two shields is going to have to beat his whole team. If I could have preserved that Alolan Muck, I had a Dark Pulse on it. That would have been some really nice energy. Oh, man. Huge misplay here, and I'm out of shields. I lose the CMP tie right here, so he definitely takes this, which means I lost the second round. And I was pretty bummed out at this point. Um, but you know, you just got to keep pressing on and it, I knew as long as I could go three and two in this tournament, I'd be able to reach elite because I was very close. Toxicroak lead into Registeel. We finally get a very confident lead here. Out comes Wireless. So I over farm a little bit and, um, then I switch into my Azumarill. This is Wireless is in ice beam range, but I know I'm going to have to eat probably three body slams here. That is okay. As long as my Azumarill stays out of Flash Cannon range, I'm still just very heavily over farming here. I throw the Ice Beam now. I'm still barely out of Flash Cannon range, and I have some residual energy to pressure that Registeel. So out comes Registeel again. Really want to get to this Hydro Pump, but I just go for the Ice Beam, hoping that he will commit a shield right here. This guy's too smart. Too smart. He doesn't even fall for the bait. He is well capped at 100 energy right now. Flash Cannon is going to be enough to take me out. I'm hoping that... Hmm. Okay, it's his own Toxic Croak in the back. So I actually switch into my Alolan Muck here just to put on some damage. And my Toxic Croak with two shields is going to be able to beat his team. I get a shield right there. Really good for me. He can't commit to the farm down. He's got to take me out. In comes my Toxic Croak. I already have some residual energy. I'm up a shield. But I do need to save a shield for the Flash Cannon that's going to be coming through on that Registeel. So I cannot over farm here. I need to get to this Mud Bomb right now. Take out his Toxic Croak. I still have a shield remaining for the Registeel. And this should be a pretty confident win here. Thank goodness I saved that shield. Holy cow. Would have been very rough in this uh, closing scenario if I did not have that shield. Man, that was brutal. I lost the second round. Very good game, so Trainee Joey, you just totally outpicked me with your line. Round three is up against Zayako here. Pretty unique team running Noctowl and, and Rainy Cast Form. So there's the Cast Form. Not super certain about how this matchup is going to play out. I know I'm hitting for super effective with my Thundershocks, but Melmetal is so dang glassy that this neutral damage of Water Gun and uh, this is going to be a Weather Ball right here does a lot of damage. So I will commit a shield right here. I'm hoping that I can outpace this cast form. Okay, out comes a Lowland Marowak. I'm going to throw a Rock Slide right here to pressure a shield. I do get a shield. 
A case definitely could have been made that I should have just immediately swapped into Azumarill instead of dumping my energy, because when that uh, Rainy Cast Form comes back out, my uh, Melmetal doesn't have any energy stored up to really threaten that as much. So definitely uh, a possible misplay on my part. I'm going for the Ice Beam here. I know this isn't going to hit for a lot of damage, but I want to be able to bubble farm down this Alolan Marowak. I make a call right here that this is a Bone Club, and I was correct. And then he gives up Switch Advantage right here, which was a, a pretty big mistake. I land the Hydro Pump, which is also a pretty big mistake. I bring out Melmetal. I'm able to farm it down. Good for me. Out comes out Alola Marowak. And I'm actually just going to let this go. Just going to let it go. I'm going to bring out my Hypno, most likely, to get a running start on energy here for whatever is in the back. It's a Toxicroak in the back, so Team Comp totally helped me out here. If it was a Noctowl in the back, I still have um, Thunder Punch or Ice Punch to thread in that. If it was a Bastidon in the back, I was screwed, man. There was nothing my Hypno would have been able to do. but So I got very fortunate with Team Comp there. Oh my, this lead is so bad. Worst possible lead. So I actually use Melmetal as a safe switch here. And I throw this superpower before the Bastidon can get out of here because I knew that I'd be able to draw a shield. He is still staying in here. I'm so surprised by this. Out comes Alolan Marowak, but honestly, bringing in Alolan Marowak into a loaded Melmetal is a gutsy move because I only need one more Rock Slide to be able to take this thing out. He's going to force me to make a decision. I am going to shield this up because I know I can get to a Rock Slide. Able to get there, this is going to be able to take out the Alolan Marowak. Does he want to commit his last shield? He does commit his last shield. But I have a Zoomerill to clean up here. However, I am worried about that Bastidon. That Bastidon has loaded energy and still a bunch of health. I'm really hoping that this was a Bone Club. Oh, but I, I shielded it up. I was too worried. I was too worried that it was going to be a Shadow Ball. Man, super unfortunate. I am going to be able to hit for super effective on this Rainy Cast form. Shields are down, so this guarantees that I can land a Hydro Pump on the um, Bastidon, which is absolutely what I need. I really need to get this Thunder Punch through. Barely able to do it. This should take out the Rainy Cast form. Most likely Bastidon is going to come back out. Okay, this was, this was actually a mistake right here. He should have just brought out Bastidon right away. Because now my Azumarill is going to be able to come out, farm more energy, and this puts me in a winning scenario. Honestly, I, I don't know if there was actually a scenario in which he would have won this because shields were down and I was going to be able to land the Hydro Pump anyways. But um, that, that further solidified the victory for me. So I'm hitting him for super effective damage uh, with Bubble here. Stone Edge is not going to be able uh, to take me out. Thank goodness my Melmetal was able to draw a shield in that that matchup earlier on. Really helps out the closing scenario right here. So down goes Sebastian, able to take that. Good game. Tropius lead. I'm worried about the Noctowl, but I haven't seen the Noctowl yet. Out comes Hypno. Does this have Ice Punch? That is the question. Going for the Leaf Blade here. If it has Thunder Punch, this is definitely a playable matchup. If it has Ice Punch, I just straight up lose. So only one way to find out. No shield it. It's a freaking Ice Punch. No! That is not good at all. Not good at all. I, I'm going to throw the Leaf Blade here, but this Hypno is going to be able to farm me down. So I have to assume that... Oh man, he dumps his energy here, which is really good for me. Okay, he just totally reveals his moveset there, so Thunder Punch and Ice Punch is what he's rolling with. I bring out my Melmetal to do some very aggressive farming down here, because I know that he likes to counter my Melmetal with Alolan Marowak. So if I can load up on two Rock Slides, that's going to really flip that match in my favor. Here it is, totally called it, out comes Alolan Marowak. I'm going to be able to pressure both shields here, or he's going to have to let this Alolan Marowak go down. Rock Slide connects, and then I switch into my Zoom Reel, hopefully catching a Bone Club here. Really good for me. 
out comes that rainy cast form. But the thing is, if I can just correctly shield up the thunder, this isn't that great of a counter to Azumarill. A grass type is much more solid of a response. Because right now we're both just hitting each other for re resisted damage. He goes straight for the thunder. Thank goodness I shielded that up. Um, and I'm just going to try to get to this hydro pump. Most likely going to begin the last shield. Because that Alolan Marowak has like no play against my Zoomerill. I switch in my Melmetal here. I actually will shield this up. Out comes that Marowak again, but I'm able to get to another Rock Slide. Really good for me. <clears throat> I'm hitting for a super effective damage with these Thunder Shocks. This actually had me worried, man. I'm like, did he get to a Thunder? He got to a Thunder. Perfect farm down. I lost that match. Good game. Uh, so I'm 2-1 right now. Round 4 is up against Unassigned Seat. He's got a very interesting team. I did not know really what to bring in against this. Azumarill seemed like a, a fairly safe lead for me. I just had to avoid the Meganium. That's really like the hardest check there. So I'm going to go straight for the Hydro Pump. In Go Battle League, people don't really like to shield their Registeels on the first move. But in these tournaments, man, like when people know your possible teams of six, they can really kind of calculate uh, risk versus reward on these shielding scenarios. So... I should have recognized that he really wants to preserve this Registeel and attempted an Ice Beam Bait on, uh, on that first one. So I'm going to attempt the bait here. Let's see if it works. It doesn't work, man. Oh, man. This is bad. My Hydro Pump got shielded. My Ice Beam didn't. Oh, my gosh. I'm able to get to the Hydro Pump at least, which this... We'll take out the Registeel or draw the last shield. Oh man, he absolutely calculated that perfectly. I have to switch into my Lolan Muck. I'm barely not able to get to this Dark Pulse. That really sucks. And it was like a CMP tie essentially. Oh man. Really bad for me. Really bad. Out comes Charizard. It's going to be able to farm this thing down. Oh, man. He just goes for Dragon Claw. He doesn't want to be hit by any energy. Makes sense. But look what I have in the back. There is no play here. I have to bring out my Tropius. I'm going to try to make a Sacrificial Swap into a Zoomeril. But he knew that it was coming. He farms me down. This is absolutely good game. No way I can come back from this. Ooh, very tough. Okay. Tropius lead. A Zoomeril and a Lolan Muck in the back. The worst possible lead. Oh, man. I So I bring in a Lolan Mach. I still have a Zoomerill in the back. He makes a huge mistake and gets Cresselia switch locked against this Alolan Muck. I have to win out this scenario to regain switch advantage because I need to ensure that my Zoomerill gets on the Charizard and that my Tropius is able to avoid that. So I'm heavily over farming here. This is also a Psycho Cut Cresselia. So it's going to be doing almost no damage with the fast moves, but it's going to be generating a lot of energy. This is going to pressure that last shield there. <clears throat> I do get the last shield, so I'm definitely going to shield this up. But it's just another Aurora Beam. He double baits me. He's playing so well. I go for the Dark Pulse. This is going to be able to take out the Cresselia here. And my Alolan Muck is still very healthy, so what's going to come out to punish this here? Out comes the Charizard again. Okay. But he is not messing around. Not messing around at all. He wants this Alolan Muck gone. I can bring out a Zoomerill to hard counter this Charizard. But what is in the back? That my tro it's, it's, uh It's his own Azumarill. I make kind of a slow swap into my Tropius. This could cost me the game here. I'm going to be able to survive one Ice Beam. But it takes a little bit more than two Leaf Blades. Just a little bit more than two Leaf Blades to take out the Azumarill. It's a play rough Azumarill. It's not even Ice Beam. So this is totally fine. You see me over farming a little bit there. Tropius wins uh, the CMP tie. I'm able to take out the Azumarill. 
But this was kind of stupid of me because now I gave this Charizard all this free energy. Doesn't matter though, my Azumarill is still going to be able to clean up. It's very healthy. I've switched in my Azumarill, I'm able to bubble down the Charizard. We came back from that horrible lead scenario because of uh, his Cresselia getting switch locked on that. Look at this. I lost the lead so hard all three games. This is this is so bad. I'm trying to hit this superpower because I know it's going to hit for super effective. But it was a CMP tie. This is only going to be a power-up punch. Still does a lot of damage. And my, me my Mel Metal is essentially so low health that... Um, yeah, this is rough. Only way I could have won this match is if I just totally sacked my Mel Metal. Just let it go down. It would have guaranteed that my Azumarill could have gotten on that Scrafty. My Alolan Muck could have um, gotten onto this Azumarill. And depending on what he has in the back, uh, probably that Charizard again, Alolan Muck would still have some play against that. So I should have taken the shield advantage. That's a scenario right there. My line of three had two things weak to Scrafty, including my lead Pokemon. So you can't do that. You cannot do that. If you run into that scenario, you have to sacrifice your lead. Out comes Scrafty onto this Alolan Muck. This is so bad. This Scrafty is just going to ramp up. I really hope this sledge wave goes through, but nope, he's fully committed. Like literally every single call, every single correct call he made in this matchup. I need to get to another sludge wave, but it doesn't happen. Dark Pulse would have been double resisted really bad. Azumarill can come out and absorb all this damage, but I'm not running play rough, so I don't really have anything that hard, threaten this, uh, hard threatens this Scrafty. So. This is game over anyways. Out comes the Azumarill. I make a sacrificial swap into my Mel Metal. That's cool. Doesn't really matter. This is also a play rough Azumarill, so I lose this mirror match anyways. So there's no way that I'm coming back from this. I have to go for the Hydro Pump to take this thing out. I still have a shield, but doesn't matter. Scrafty can come out. Let's see what was in the back. It was the Charizard. So, lesson learned. It's... It's incredibly hard to make these decisions in the moment, but looking back, seeing that he led Scrafty, just sacked the Mel Metal. Just totally sacked the Mel Metal because I didn't have two responses to Scrafty in the back. I had a Zoomerill, which was a complete hard wall, so after Scrafty would have built up all of that energy, a Zoomerill could have shut that down, but so I'm now two and two in my regionals. Hanging my head in shame a little bit, but we're going into the final round here up against SBT Ollie. Let's see how this goes. I need to go three and two to be able to reach elite. Horrible lead. Absolutely terrible lead. I'm going to use my Mel Metal as my safe switch here because nothing on his team um, can super punish this. Obviously, Scrafty can super punish this, but if I also include Azumarill in my lineup, it shuts down all that energy that he will gain. And because he was pretty slow to bring in the Meganium here, I actually think Melmetal is going to be able to handle this matchup here. So I shield up this Frenzy Plant. The thing is, the Meganium can just go straight Frenzy Plant here because of how glassy Melmetal is, but Melmetal beats Meganium to these Rock Slides, and I would win CMP. So this is one example where maintaining switch advantage is so crucial. I am going to commit my second shield here and Thundershock down this Meganium, really banking on the fact that he's not able to get to another Frenzy Plant. It works out beautifully. Out comes Hypno. I know there's still a Bastiodon in the back. I'm able to get to two Rock Slides, really putting a lot of pressure on this Hypno. Melmetal came in so clutch in this matchup right here. Okay, we're going to see what elemental punch this Hypno has. Rock and Thunder Punch, pretty standard. Now I can bring out my Tropius, and this ensures that I get to avoid the Bastidon, which is amazing. I'm looking for the switch out. Oh man, he makes a beautiful swap into Bastidon. But this actually puts the Bastidon in Hydro Pump range, so it's okay that that Leaf Blade went through. I am worried that he also might be running Ice Punch on his Tropius, which would be real, or on his uh, Hypno, which would be really bad for me. I'm just going for the Hydro Pump here because I don't want to take any more damage. I know I'm going to eat some Thunder Punches from that Hypno, but if I can put on some Ice Beam, 
damage before I go down, that'd be really great. Or just force him to dump all of his energy here. I am able to get to this Ice Beam, thank goodness. He's most likely just committing to the farm down here. Oh man, but then I'm able to bubble it down. I take that first game, good game. Going with a Melmetal lead here, hoping to catch the Hypno, the Tropius, Bastiodon, Meganium. All that stuff is playable. All that stuff is playable. This is playable right here. We know that this Hypno has Thunder Punch. If they are running Shadow Ball, pretty sure Hypno can win this matchup if the Shadow Ball connects. I land that first Rock Slide. He's definitely adding enough energy for a Shadow Ball right now, so I'm getting pretty nervous. He shields that Hypno, and then he gives up Switch Advantage. Huge mistake, because now Azumarill is locked against the Scrafty. Scrafty, you can't do nothing to an Azumarill, man. So what most people do uh, when this scenario takes place is exactly what he's doing right now. Straight power-up punch to purely burn out the clock. So that way he can try to like preserve his Scrafty. He even shields up the Scrafty. I have a two-shield advantage right now. Totally fine by me. There's no point in shielding any of this stuff. It's just power-up punch. He's going to switch out at any moment, though. He's going to switch out. There it is! I knew it was coming, and I was still tapping the Hydro Pump like an idiot. Man! But this is okay. Now his Azumarill is switch-locked against my Tropius. I know an Ice Beam is going to be coming through, and it's still going to take two Leaf Blades to take out the Azumarill at this range. So I'm over-farming. It's still not in Leaf Blade range, which is very unfortunate. He still has the Hypno. Not able to leaf or not able to air slash this down before it gets to another charge move, but that's okay. This is a very loaded Tropius. Are we going to see Ice Punch on the Hypno? Or is this going to be a Shadow Ball? Shields are down. It is an Ice Punch. This is what I was worried about. And then he sack swaps Scrafty. Oh my gosh. Amazing play. His switches were all over the place in this matchup. If this is a foul play, it's probably going to be enough to take me out. It's only a power up punch. Oh my gosh, this gave me enough energy to throw another Leaf Blade. Hypno is still alive, folks. I'm going to my Melmetal. I think I was still barely out of Thunder Punch range, but I I go for the Rock Side and I'm able to take that. So this solidifies that I went 3-2 in the tournament. We do play our third match here, though. Oh, man. This tournament was really tough. I'm really glad that Voyager Cup is over. Uh, my performance in Voyager Cup this month has been unbelievably inconsistent. There have been some seven-round tournaments where I've went six and one, five and two. Um, there's been, you know, I've gone like five and one and some six-rounders. Uh, I went one and three in a four-rounder. I went three and three in my weighted earlier this month. I went three and two in this way to like just crazy inconsistent performance if i would have waited obviously one of the ones where i did really well my ranking would be much higher but that is okay i can't really perform that consistent in an open great league format like this um and not like not downplaying anybody's skill or anything but cup formats like this there is a little bit more chance involved just purely in terms of the lead pokemon and that does factor in a little bit heavier in this sort of a cup format versus um something that has a little bit more restrictions to the typings like forest cup right now feels uh, a lot less like lead dependent and hard countery like there's definitely a lot of matchups that can flip in there um but yeah voyager was uh not super consistent for me I'm going for the Ice Beam Bait here, but look at that call. Look at that call. I was just going to hope that my Zoomerill with two shields could sweep his team, but it's not going to happen. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know how you did in your regionals. Uh, kind of bummed with my performance, but that is okay. You live and you learn, and you get a battle another day. Um, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you appreciate these Sylph Arena videos. If you want to support the channel, head on over to my Patreon. The link will be down in the description. Man, let me know what you think about uh, Forest Cup. I will be making some more videos on that as well as some more Go Battle League videos. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.